Hi, this is a quick rundown of the E over M setup and apparatus because E over M is a very important experiment. There's lots of interesting physics going on, but there's a, lot, a few connections in there, so we want to kind of give you this ahead of time so when you're in the lab, you can get a good sense of the actual physics and actually appreciate it. Okay, so the E over M apparatus here consists of these four things the black box, the red box, and a couple multimeters. Um, the black box there houses the bulb as well as the, uh, the electron gun and the Helmholtz coil which produce the magnetic field. The power supply supplies the power and we're using the multimeter to get better readings of the voltage and current. So let's take a closer look at uh, what's inside the black box. So the black box here looks quite dark because that's the only way we'll see the beam of electron coming through. But let's open it up and take a look inside. Yeah. So inside here, there's the Helmholtz coil, which has current going around and around. That's going to produce a magnetic field that goes in and out. We'll figure out the direction in a second. Um, this glass thing here has the bulb. Inside is filled with a certain gas that as the electron moves through it, it excites the gas and we can see the actual um, path of the electron. While we don't see the electrons themselves, we're definitely seeing where the electrons are going. And right, this metal part here, that's actually a tiny filament which we heat up so it bleeds out electrons. That's an electron gun. And then there's a couple parallel plates in there which we accelerate the electron to go at a nice fast speed so that it will get affected by the magnetic field. Okay, so let's start hooking this up, this thing up. We need to connect the red box to the black box with a, to supply a few things. So we talked about the heater current, which is the filament that you shoot the electrons out of, so it needs heating. That's coming from the AC source here. The accelerating voltage to speed up the electron, that's the 0 to 500 volts supply. And then also the Helmholtz coil needs quite a bit of current up to 2 amps, so we'll use the 5 amp current source. So, let's get going. And that's good. You'll notice that we haven't actually hooked in the multimeter yet because there's a few things we have to go through there. But let's get this thing fired up and see how it goes. So the two adjustments you'll do here is through this knob you adjust the voltage, the accelerating voltage, and through here that's when you control the current. Usually we have these on max. This is the current control over here for the magnetic field. And take a look. So it's just coming through fairly faintly on the camera. I do apologize, but in the lab it's going to be a lot better. Um, so knowing that the electrons are shooting out downwards and knowing which way the force is acting on it, we can actually figure out the direction of the magnetic field as well. But I'll leave that up for you to do. Uh, some quant sorry, qualitative uh, things we can do around here is we can think about, okay, um, if I decrease the coil current, is I going to make my circle bigger or smaller? So here we go. I'm going to decrease my coil current. So hopefully you can see that it's getting a little bit bigger. If I increase the coil current again, of course that's going to increase my magnetic field, increasing my magnetic force. Also, I can also adjust my accelerating voltage. If I decrease my accelerating voltage, it's going to make my electron go slower and that's also going to make my circle go smaller and smaller. Of course in this lab we're trying to maintain a certain radius while changing the voltage and current. So we'll go back and talk about how to get some good numbers. So as I was saying, in order to get good values for your um, E over M, we will need good numbers for voltage and current. Now unfortunately, while these are shown here, um, they're not down to that much precision, especially for the current. So we'll use these digital multimeters. Um, 
hopefully you should know how to use these already. If not, there will be a detailed video about these also posted. In any case, a uh, quick rundown. For digital, for digital voltmeter, you always use the common anyways. And for voltage, you put it on the V. And you switch it over to V DC. The voltage are fairly high here and the current, so make sure you turn it off before you make any connection. The voltage is the easy one. You don't have to disconnect anything. You just kind of go parallel to it. Now, there's no connection here, so I'm just going to swap this through. This is for my accelerating voltage. Then the more important one is the current. For the ammeter, uh, you of course once again use common, switch it over to DC, amp, DC amps. The important thing here, you want to use a 10 amp scale, not the 300 milliamps, because we're expecting currents up to 2 amps. If we have as high as 2 amps going through this one, we'll blow the fuse and then we have to replace something, and that's not fun. Um, this though, of course, you connect in series, so you have to disconnect the circuit somewhere. Probably here. Then the positive goes to the positive side, and the negative goes back. Double check nothing is touching and shorting out. Should be okay. DC apps, DC volts. Have that on again. So while this is reading 243, this is reading 245.0. This is Both of these are giving you extra digits, and from that you can get good graphs, and hopefully find a good value for E over M. Thanks, we'll see you in the lab.